every time I go to record, my freaking heater turns on. So I apologize for that if you guys can hear that. We're going to get through this together because we don't have a choice. Hi besties, what's up? My name is Mackenzie and welcome to my channel and welcome to the top 15 books I wish I would have gotten to in 2023. The only reason there's 15 books on this list is literally because I could not decide. And 15 was a nicer number than some of the other ones. However, I do have some honorable mentions that I want to mention really quick. And I will explain to you why why they're on honorable mention. So I do want to throw a little disclaimer out here. I will try to synopsize these books as best as I know how to. However, the problem is, is I do forget what the synopsis is synopses of books are quite easily so I may not know I may not know and y'all are just gonna have to forgive me for that one okay I apologize but I hope you can understand so the first two are honorable mentions and I should have grabbed them off of my shelf but I did not because I yeah, I failed at that so <laughs> I'm gonna pop them on the screen and that is book lovers and be treated by Emily Henry so there is a very good reason why these are both on here, and it will be given to you in the next book. So, if you don't know, Beatreed follows our two main characters. Couldn't tell you their names to save my life, so there you are. But they are both writers, and they have both been struggling writing their genre that they predominantly write in. So they decide that they are going to switch genres and see who can write a book in the other person's genre faster and then book lovers is I honestly I don't know is it about a publicist and an author I, I honestly I really don't know about that one but it did a lot of people really liked it and really hated it last year I think that Beach Read is one of Emily Henry's more popular books like more beloved books I'm not saying that all of her books aren't beloved but like I think it's her most loved book. A lot of people really seem to like that one. Now the reason that those two are not on my list, my official list, is because Happy Place is. Happy Place is her release from this year and um, I don't know if you can see but I actually started reading it. I got uh, 28 pages in and I did start annotating it. I was really enjoying it. However, the great reading slump of 2023 hit me so I never ended up finishing it but this is the one that I bought this year that I literally read the first chapter on my Kindle and I said, no, I need this. I need to annotate it. I love it already. So if you don't know, I believe our main characters' names are Wynne and Harriet. I knew Wynne's name. I, I couldn't remember Harriet's name. I apologize. But Wynne and Harriet are actually in a bit of a sticky situation. Essentially, they were together all of their college years. And then for one reason or another, we find out that they have actually broken their engagement. However, they have been unable to tell their friends because they don't want to tell them over the phone and they're basically like long distance friends. So we pick up at this beach house and Harriet is surprised when she finds out the win is there. And basically this is the last time that all the friends can hang out at the beach house. and not only do Wynn and Harriet basically have to pretend to be together, but they also have to find out a way to maybe tell their friends at the end of this trip that they are no longer together. Again, I really liked what I read so far. I just, I just didn't get, I obviously didn't get as far into it as I wanted to because I wanted to finish it, but this is the one that I'm kind of most disappointed that I didn't get to because I do think that like book lovers, this one is very hit or miss for people and I'd be very intrigued to see what I think of it, so. Also, I love this cover. I might say that with a few other ones, but like I love this bright pink cover. It really makes me happy. So, yeah, there's the first one. A lot of these books, like this next one, you will see that I actually have two copies that I pre ordered. We have A Wilderness of Stars by Shay Earnshaw. So, if you don't know, Shay Earnshaw wrote Winterwood and. Oh, what was her other one? I am so sorry. The Wicked Deep. Thank goodness she has her books and their covers right here but I really love those books Winterwood is actually one of my favorite books of all time so I was very excited to hear about this this is unlike anything Shay Earnshaw has ever done and I honestly do not remember the premise of this book but I was so excited for it that I bought the bookish box special edition too it has this really pretty cut out has these really pretty end pages 
a quote on the back. And then if you take the dust jacket off, this is what it looks like, Nike. It's beautiful. And when I saw the cover, I was like, I need that in my collection right now. This was obviously like an auto buy for me because I love Shay Earnshaw so much. I've read almost all the books she's come out with. I was not interested in the one more recent to this, but I do believe this more goes into like fantasy romance like her other two kind of do. So I'm very excited to get into this book. I think that it's going to be super great. I just, I really need to get into it eventually. Obviously, probably not this year, if we're being realistic, but maybe sometime during the winter next year. I mean, the beginning of, like, the beginning of the year, winter. Next, we have one that is no stranger on my channel, and that is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. So, if you saw my November TBR, you might remember me saying something to the effect of, I'm definitely reading this. It didn't happen. It, it, it didn't happen. So, if you don't know, this book follows our main character and it's in World War II, I believe? Nazi Germany. I, I feel like such an idiot. I don't know what war this was. You know what? It's fine. You can tell how much I paid attention in high school. I'm sorry. That is so bad. That is literally so bad. Pretty sure it's World War II though. I, I don't know. But anyways, this takes place in Nazi Germany and basically they are burning all the books so our little girl main character actually goes to save these books from getting burned and I believe our narrator is actually death. I've heard that this heartbreaking, oh crush your soul. I do want my soul to be crushed eventually so I will eventually get to this. This is another one that I think gives off perfect winter vibes so if I do get to it in December I'd be very surprised. I, I don't, I know I won't. I know I won't. Let's just be so real but I could see myself trying to get to it in January or February because the longer I put it off, I don't know, if I don't read it in January or February, it's going to get put off until November, December of next year too. So it's just, it's a never ending battle with this one, but I do really want to read it. Also, this is the special, it's like the anniversary edition, I think. I, I don't like the original cover. I can't remember what it looks like, but I do love this. This is like really simple and yeah, I'm very excited to read this one day when I get a chance to. Next, we have Yellowface by R.F. Kwong. So, if you don't know, Yellowface follows... Okay, cool. Oh. Whoa. Alrighty, so I, I'm reading to get, like, the... the bring my thoughts together for the synopsis, and dude, whoa, that, that paragraph that I just read was wax. So, basically... Our main character, Athena, gets killed at the very beginning of this book. And so, in an act of, like, pure chaos, June steals this manuscript that Athena was working on about um, Chinese immigrants, I believe it is. And the kicker is that June thinks that because she's white, she deserves to have all the publishers and everything that she's ever wanted, which is why she kind of thinks that she can steal this work from Athena. Because Athena is also a very successful author, and June just wants her big break. And I... This is the one that I am honestly, of this list, I'm most apprehensive to read this one. I'm afraid I won't get the nuance to this book. I'm interested to see how I feel about this because a lot of people, the main criticism that people have is that this feels like a self-insert um, from R.F. Kuang because, yeah, it, it feels like she's calling out the publishing companies basically, but I've heard so many mixed things so I don't, I don't, I don't know what to believe. So I'm excited to hopefully get to this eventually. I need to catch up on all of our Kwong's books. I still haven't read the third book to the... Oh my gosh, what is it called? Poppy Word Trilogy. I still haven't read the third book. And I really need to because the second book... Oh, The Burning God. That's, that's what it's called. I still haven't read The Burning God and I'm really scared of that book to be honest. Yeah. You guys should give me some like hype down below to finish that series because I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. Next, we have another kind of controversial read, if you will. Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. This is up there 
with Colleen Hoover's most disliked books. I'm just gonna be for real with you guys. Like, when we think of Colleen Hoover's most loved books, we don't think of hard bones. I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna call a spade a spade here. And to be honest, I'm not really exactly sure what this is about, but it looks like it's like opposites attract. Bea has lived a life of poverty and neglect, and Samson has lived a life of wealth. They end up spending the summer together, and their bond is super intense. And it looks like they're gonna end up separated on other sides of the country. So, I'm honestly, that was the worst synopsis that I've ever given in my life. So, we're just gonna continue on. But, I don't know, for some reason, I think I really might like this book. I do have the audiobook for it, so one day when I can sit down and fly through this book, I will. But, yeah. This is also like one of her prettiest covers. I feel like I, I really love this cover. So I really hope I like it so I can keep it because I don't know how many more of her original covers. I don't know how many of them you can still get. So I really hope I like this one since I have the original cover. I got that for Christmas last year. So this is like a full circle moment for me. Next we have Imogen Obviously by Becky Albertalli. Um, I love Becky Albertalli and... I haven't read all of her books, but I do love Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda. That is one of my favorite books of all time. And I thought that this book was, it was supposed to be my best, like one of my best books of 2023. And I just never got to it. So essentially this book obviously follows Imogen and she is in college and she's always had these preconceived notions about herself. However, someone falls into her life that makes her question these preconceived notions that she has about herself. And it is set in college, so I think there's going to be spice in it. I, I, I mean, there might not be, so don't hold me to that. I literally have no clue, but I do really wish I would have gotten to this. I think it's, I think it would be so good. And I, I, I do love this cover. I, I like all these covers, obviously, or else I wouldn't have gotten them. I'm just so disappointed I didn't get to this because I do think I actually bought this really close to release date, so... I'm so bummed about this one. Okay, next let's go with one that I think, I think might be turned into a series. I, I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't quote me on it, but that is The Luminaries by Susan Dennard. So, the reason I have this book is mostly because I wanted to test the waters with Susan Dennard and her writing before I went into the Truth Witch series because I heard that that one is very complex. And I really just wanted to give her writing and her characters a chance before I jumped into that one so that I know kind of what I'm getting myself into, at least a little bit. So, um, all I know is that this main character's name is Winnie Wednesday. Yeah. It looks like she wants to be part of the Luminaries, which is an ancient order that protects her town and the rest of humanity from monsters and nightmares that rise in the forest of Hemlock Falls every night. And if I'm not mistaken... Susan's audience actually helped her write this. I think it actually started as a series of polls and then she realized that people might actually like this book that she's putting together so she wrote it and again with this cover I'm literally so obsessed with this cover. I love it so much so I do really wish I would have gotten to this one. This one hurts too but I do think that there's actually a second book so I don't really know if that counts but we're, go we're gonna go with it. Next we have Cruel Illusions by Margie Fustin. And basically what I know about this one is that ever since Ava's mom was killed by vampires, she has wanted to get revenge. So she becomes a vampire hunter and I believe that she has to go into like the vampire realm and basically hide in plain sight there. So I'm very excited to get to this. Okay. This is a second and only other book that I have started and that's Babel by R.F. Kwong. So you may be wondering, why can I put two R.F. Kwong books on here but not three Emily Henry's? I couldn't tell you. I really couldn't tell you. I was actually going to do a reading vlog for this book because it was like, ooh, it was getting to me besties. It really was. But I really, I really love this book so far. Again, again, I'm literally like 19 pages in. Chapter two. I'm, I'm on chapter two. I would have to, I'm, I'm going to restart this when I reread it again or start rereading it. But there were just some, I remember some of the lines in here from obviously just flipping through it but oh, this was just mm, it was so good already and I wish I would have finished it out but I got really intimidated 
that is like literally the main reason why I haven't read some of these books is because I'm just intimidated. I'm a pansy. Bully me in the comments. <laughs> but this is also another one. Do we see this? Do we see this? This is quite possibly the prettiest book I own. I'm just gonna say it. This was like a bucket list book. Fairy Loot never misses with their books. This is ridiculous. This is so pretty. I think that um, someone else also did like someone else also did an alternate cover and I believe it actually had like the had a book slip. I don't know what those are called, but a book slip essentially. And I think it actually looks more like this one than this one. But oh my gosh, isn't this so pretty? So I'm trying to remember. I think that in this one we are following Robin. And I think that this might be a magical realism, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that. That is why I'm talking like that. But essentially he is orphaned and he is taken in by Professor Lovell. And he trains for years in Latin and ancient Greek and Chinese, all in preparation for one day that he'll enroll in Oxford University's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation, also known as Babel. So, yeah, this sounds, it was just so good what I read, and then I never continued it, so that's disappointing. I swear, my camera's gonna die again. I literally filmed the clip for another video that it died in. I... And it's just not my day today. So we're going to speed through these last few books. So next we have Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. Um, I think it's friends to lovers, or like, lovers to enemies to friends to lovers. Yep, that's all I know about it. I know everybody loves it. I love this cover. Again, I'm going to say that about all these books, aren't I? But I'm very, very excited to read this one. Um, I think it's cozy. It gives cozy, wintry vibes. So I... I kind of want to try to get to it this year, but sh listen, we all know how that's going to go. I've said that about every single book in the stack, so we're just going to keep going. <laughs> I am so sorry, you guys. I I feel like this is being rushed, but like, honestly, I'm long-winded enough. Well, we don't need a 50-minute video of me explaining all these books. So next we have A Thousand Heartbeats by Kiara Cass. I bought these because I literally read this. So I reread the selection series typically once a year. It really just depends. And I read The Heir and the Crown last year and I was so obsessed with them. So I got this one and then it didn't come. And I was like, okay, maybe I actually didn't order that one. So I ordered this one. And both of them are pretty. So I, I can't get rid of either of them. I literally bought them because Kira Cass wrote them. So yeah, that's all I can say to you. Um, but uh, just look at these. Aren't they so pretty? I love this. I love the spread of this book. Sorry. I'm just gonna like, isn't that so pretty? Okay. Anyways. Yes, I bought it because it was pretty and because it was Kira Cass. Sue me. Don't sue me. I have no money. You would get nothing. There would be no settlement. You'd just be poor still. Hi besties. How you doing? My camera literally died. I had three books left and it died. And you know what? Here's the thing. I would go back and talk about those three or four books that I talked about pre- or three books. Yeah. That I talked about just before my clip or my camera died. However, I'm just going to be so for real with you guys right now. If I were to go and talk more in depth about them, I would need to read the synopsis synopses. Again, I don't know how to say that word, so <laughs> go me. And I'm not going to do that. So we are just going to swiftly move on to the last three books that we have to talk about here. And I do want to say, if I don't know how to count, and this has been more than 15 books minus the two bonus books we talked about at the beginning of this video, I apologize. Like, there's just nothing I can do about my inability to count. So, like, I'm a reader. I'm an English girlie, not a math girl. Next we have La Pavona by Otesha Moshfeg. Who? that is a hard name to say all at once, but this is another one I don't know what it's about, but I believe it either came out this year or last year. I'm trying to remember. If it did come out last year, oh, look at me go. So if I remember correctly, 
That means I also read my year of rest and relaxation last year as well. And I really, really enjoyed that book. Surprisingly, I did not think it was going to be for me, but I did really enjoy it. So I got this one as well. And I just never got around to reading it, unfortunately. And I am very hesitant to keep reading this because I did start annotating it when I started reading it last year, I believe it was. And I don't know if I'm going to like it as much as my year in rest and relaxation. But nonetheless, I'm very excited to keep reading Otesha Moshvig's books, new books and books that are on her backlist. I'm really interested in Death in Her Hands, I think is what it's called. Mm -hmm. And there are a few other books that she's written previous to this one and my year of rest and relaxation so I'm very intrigued to go back and read some of her older works and obviously to read this newer one I think I, I really hope I like it this is the one out of the stack of books that I'm honestly least certain I'm gonna love I also don't remember the synopsis of this book and I actually kind of don't want to know it so I'm just gonna set it over there and we're gonna be surprised when we read it next year together Maybe I should, if you guys want videos on any of these books that I mentioned today, you should let me know because I'm like so down to do that. That'd be so fun. Next, we have Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. Um, if you don't know, Allie Hazelwood wrote The Love Hypothesis and I love that book. So, and she also wrote Loath to Love You, which is a collection of short stories. And I'm so obsessed with them and I love them. And I think her newest book would also be on this list. Um, check and mate I think she also has another adult romance that's come out since love on the brain I don't own either of those because I told myself that I definitely need to read this before I read or buy the other two so yeah. all I know is that this is a stem enemies to lovers romance like the other one was so like the love hypothesis was so I'm very excited to get to it and see what I think of it I'm very excited to get to this I heard that the end is kind of weird like I, I don't really know what happens at the end of the book, but I heard that it's really weird, so I'm intrigued to get to it and see what I think of it. And then last but not least, y'all might call this cheating, and honestly, I don't really know if it's cheating, because I don't know if this is like... I know... Okay, I'll just show you the book, and we can decide together. So, first and foremost, I do want to say, this is still in the plastic. <laughs> it's still in the plastic. I'm so scared to ruin this book. It's so pretty. I love it, and I hate all the other covers. Like, I, I don't like the other cover. I couldn't tell you why. I don't like it. But this is beautiful. So, if you don't know, this is basically... So, this is Trust of the Emerald Sea. Trust of the Emerald Sea. I'm glad that we all learned how to read so that we could be here today. And it's by Brandon Sanderson. And this is one of his secret projects that he worked on during COVID. And I don't know if this is the first in a series of standalones or if all of them are just standalones and they're not a series of standalones. I have no clue. So if this doesn't count, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. But I'm so intrigued by this book. And the only reason that I have not read this is because I want to read at least the Mistborn trilogy before I read this. I heard that there's like nods to the Cosmere. So that is why I have not read this beautiful book yet. That is why it is still in the plastic. Also, when I moved a couple months ago, I did not want this book to get ruined. I was also kind of concerned that my cat might, like, scratch it since it's, um... I think it's... I don't... I don't think it's cloth, actually. I thought that it might be cloth-bound, but I don't think it is. I don't know, but... Ugh, this is so pretty, and I needed it, so... As soon as I read some of the Cosmere, at least the Mistborn trilogy, I want to read this. But I do think I want to at least try to re read um, the Way of King series as well. I don't think that's what it's called, but it could be. So we're going to go with that one. But I do really want to get more into Brandon Sanderson next year. I love the Skyward series by him. And I don't know if I would call that his least... I feel like that's his least popular series. Minus, I think there might be a middle grade series. I literally couldn't tell you what it's called that might be the least like popular series but I think Skyward is there too like when I hear Brandon Sanderson I think of Wave Kings and Mistborn I don't really think Skyward even though it's one of my favorite series and I don't think of the other one but yeah I I'm so excited to get to this those are 
the top 15 books standalones, if you will. Those are the top 15 standalones that I really, really wish I would have gotten to. I am so sorry that my heater turned on. We were doing so well. I thought I was going to make it. And my camera battery is flashing at me again. So you know I didn't charge my camera for long enough. But um, I really appreciate you guys for watching this. If you want more stuff from me, I will link my book miss playlist down below and in the cards if I remember to. And if you guys like the video, go ahead and hit the like button. That'd be fun. And if you have stuck around this long, you should hit the subscribe button because it's always a fun rambly time over here. And you should hit the bell while you're over there too. Like, just hit all three, honestly. It'll take you like three seconds. Like, time time yourself. It'll take you three seconds. It might only take you one second if you're fast. So time yourself. But anyways, everything aside, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next bonus video. Bye, everyone. Don't shine when you're not near I don't feel like I do when you're